You know, that big uh, little energy field that surrounds Hyrule Castle is pretty cool looking. Hey everybody on YouTube, this is Super Nintendo, and welcome back to another episode of The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess HD. Last time, we went to the Hyrule Castle to uh, meet with Princess Zelda, who informed us that we need to go to the Sacred Grove in order to find the Blade of Evil's Bane, the Master Sword, to cleave the veil of darkness that surrounds us. And then, she gave up her life to save Midna's. Maybe that's why Midna is um, currently able to be in the light, despite the fact that she is a shadow creature Hmm. Anyway, this time we are going to go to the Faerun region to search for the, uh, to search for the, uh, uh, Sacred Grove. I forgot the name of it for a second. <laughs> So, uh, to talk a bit more about, uh, Midna, I'll oh, save it for a sec. These are a new enemy. These are puppets. Deep. Did you just save me? Th thank you. Listen, since you're so nice, let me tell you something. There's a there's a really pretty wooded area on the other side of this cliff. I climbed over there, but when I tried to go get deeper into the woods, those guys attacked me. What's in those woods anyway? So, uh, yeah, those are puppets. So, there's another section of the forest beyond this cliff. Alright, Link, let's go! Let's go. The way I made her say let's go does not uh, fit her voice at all. <laughs> you can die. Well, <laughs> uh, to talk more about Midna, I love the way that she, uh, I love her character development in this game. How she goes from being a uh, character that is very selfish, very almost menacing, almost evil. And uh, she's very much out for herself. And then over the course of the game is uh, transformed almost by Link into a very caring, selfless person. I mean, it's not a novel transformation, but it's still something. one of these that I don't have to sit here doing this for like five or six times before I get it. Let teachings of old pass to you. Take sword in hand and find me. Hmm. 
So like I said, that was the prelude of light. If you notice, most of these songs that we, actually every single one of these songs that we have come across so far, have been from Ocarina of Time, or in the, or in the one case, uh, Majora's Mask. Hmm, I wonder who the hero's shade could be. Hmm. Meet the Skull Kid, the very, believed to be the very same Skull Kid from Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. And uh, if you notice, the movements of these puppets, they are very reminiscent of the way Skull Kid moved in Majora's Mask. It's, um... Very uncanny. In fact, that's the main reason why people think that this is the very same Skull Kid. Me and myself included. Um, these things are just. I don't. I don't know. I, I really love. Uh, like I said, I love this game. I love the, the little nods to um, to the other Zelda games. You know. It's, I love Zelda games, what can I say? I mean, in addition to playing this, I've also been replaying Skyward Sword on my own time, trying to uh, beat that 100%. Hmm. Ah! Stupid puppets. You can die. You can die. Why did I say it like that? You can die, stupid puppets. Yeah, these puppets are annoying because they constantly respawn and, uh, yeah, it's just. It's not okay. Up here, I think they have to respawn up here or something. 
Well, it's not even that they're being respawned, it's just that this guy keeps making more of them. We are guardians of this land. Guide us to where we once stood. Only then can you enter the true sacred grove. Okay, so this is widely considered to be the hardest puzzle in the series. Or even just this game. Um... I will admit that I am no master when it comes to uh, this game, with or this uh, puzzle, rather. Just going to uh, kind of hop over here. I think I messed up here. Let's see. Like I said, I am not a master of this game. Um, even though I have played it uh, so many times. Let's see. Let's do that. Do that. 
Uh, let's return them to their positions. I I think I messed up here. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I normally don't have this much trouble with this puzzle. It's uh, just because I am an idiot. I am an idiot. Go. I am stupid. Go now to the sacred place, beast. We yield passage to the sacred grove. The sword has accepted you as its master. This thing is the embodiment of the evil magic that Zan cast on you. It's definitely different from our tribe's shadow magic. Careful, if you touch it, you'll turn back into a beast. This thing is too dangerous. It's probably for the best if we leave it here, huh? But on the other hand, if we kept it, you'd be able to transform into a beast anytime you wanted. Yes, since Zant was kind enough to give this to us, we should be thankful and use it all we can. If you need it, just call me. I want it, I want to keep a low profile, so I'll hide in your shadow when you're human. But I can change you whenever. You can be a wolf anytime you like. Also, thanks to this thing, you can warp where, whenever you want by switching into wolf form. Hey, but listen, Link. I've got a little favor to ask of you. Would you mind coming with me to find something called the Mirror of Twilight? It's hidden somewhere in Hyrule. Yes, the Mirror of Twilight. Our last potential link to Zant.
Hmm. Well, isn't this place a uh, very pretty looking? Now, uh, there is a golden bug here. Where are you? But are you golden bug? You are there. Okay, we got ourselves a golden male snail. Okay, so next time on The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD, we're actually not going to make a little bit... We're not actually not going to make any story progress. Um, well, we might make a little bit, but... Um, primarily, next time, we are going to go after these uh, little puzzles. We're going to go after everyone that we have access to right now. Uh, primarily because if we just go around searching for these things as we find them, then it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to actually find them. Um, so I think we might get some heart pieces too, but, uh, that will be primarily what we are doing next time. Okay? See you guys then.